Well, I wondered what this sudden trip to town was all about. Now I know. He said it was to buy me a new dress. More than likely it's to buy him a new tractor. Probably one just like this. Come to think of it, there has been a lot of talk around the house about Tom Martin's new D-14. How much power it's got, and how many things it'll do, and how easy it is to operate. <laughs> he and the boy probably haven't been able to sleep nights for thinking about it. Unless I miss my guess, our next stop is the farm equipment dealers. You know, the Williams family. <laughs> Put a new piece of equipment on display and no telling what old friends may turn up. I had a hunch Ralph Williams wouldn't let any grass grow under his feet once he got the word that the new D-17 was in. And I'm glad the boy came too. It's going to take all the help we can get on this sale if I know Martha Williams. These days, the buying of a tractor has become a family affair because it's the basic unit of equipment in modern mechanized farming. And because, at one time or another, all the family may operate it. So, it has to be safe, convenient, and powerful enough to provide the kind of performance that'll help a family to farm better and live better. The Williams have a big farm, so Ralph's first question makes sense. How much plow can the D-17 handle? Better to show him than try to tell him. Most farmers who don't know our products are really convinced when they see them at work in their own farms. That's why we sell more tractors in the field through demonstrations than we do on the showroom floor. It's one thing to say a D-17 will pull a five-bottom plow or a 15-foot disc harrow or a 12-foot cultivator. But it's another to actually do it with the farmer himself at the wheel. Of course, they've seen Tom Martin's new D-14 in action. So they have some idea of what to expect from the bigger and more powerful D-17. And a tractor like this puts the Williams farm which is a family-sized farm, on an equal footing with the large farms using hired hands. And from the beginning, Alice Chalmers has designed its farm equipment especially for the family farm. But even so, the idea of plowing up to 25 acres a day, disking 75 acres, or planting 60 acres a day, takes some getting used to. So we might just as well do our talking in here where we can be more comfortable. Fine. Say, I wonder if you folks excuse me for a moment. I want to see how Fred's making out. Sure. You go right ahead. We'll be all okay, right. Okay, I'll in be here. right back. Well, it certainly was sweet of you two to take me dress shopping with you. Oh, now, Martha. Now, tell me, which dress do you think will look best on me, the D-14 or the D-17? Oh, now, we really are going dress shopping right afterwards. Hey, Mom, how did you like it? The D-17, I mean. You think you could run it? She drives the family car, doesn't she? 
<laughs> well, there's your answer. One of these fine days, I hope you will try it, though, Martha. It'll surprise you, really, it will. Well, let's see. Where were we? Well, I still don't see where you get all the pull power. This hasn't got much more horsepower than my old one. Well, it's all in the way it was engineered, Ralph, in the way the horsepower is applied. That what they mean by this traction booster? In a way, yes. As the name implies, the traction booster system increases traction at the moment it's needed, automatically, by transferring implement weight to the tractor rear wheel. Which is why a tractor equipped with this new principle will do at least 25% more work than a tractor equipped with other present-day hydraulic systems. Test shows savings up to 20% in fuel. Well, thank you, young Ralph, thank you. Hey, boy, whose side are you on? I suppose you'll pay him a commission if you make a sale. You bet we will. Well, I don't know very much about these things, but doesn't how much work a tractor can do depend on how big it is? Well, Martha, let me put it this way. It does if the engineers take the lazy man's way out. Mostly, though, it depends on how well it's designed. You've seen Tom Martin's new D-14? Yes, that's what I was thinking. Well, it's smaller than his old tractor, and yet it has almost double the work capacity because it's properly engineered. But this D-17, you don't call that a little tractor. No, but it's not bulky either. And it's not lugging around any dead weight. It's big, all right, in horsepower, in effective weight, in working capacity, in all of the things that a heavy-duty tractor should be big in. That poster that we were looking at before, Ralph, gives you a pretty good idea of what it'll do in comparison to your present tractor. Hmm, <laughs> that old thing. I can remember the day when you could wait till you were old enough to drive that old thing. Yeah, Mom, but times have changed. Let's face it, there is such a thing as progress. And why fight it, eh, boy? It's done a job, but the boy's got a point. The new tractors do more work in less time. And time's one thing I always seem to be running out of. Still, I don't say the answer to the problem necessarily has to come in bright orange. A uh, 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 Persian orange, please. Okay, Persian orange. Well, to tell you the truth, I've been wondering about that. About switching to another make of tractor, when we really don't know very much about, well, about the company that's behind it. Well, I agree with you 100%. Just plain good old common sense to want to know something about the company behind the product before you buy. Of course, I think you know a great deal more about Alice Chalmers than you realize, Martha. Oh, how's that? Well, they make a lot of things besides just farm equipment. In fact, I didn't realize just how many things myself until this new 8mm film came in the other day. Let's see here. It's called Engineering in Action. And I sure hope you folks have got enough time so I can show it to you. Sure. We'll take time. Uh, won't we, dear? Why not? I'm sure my shopping can wait. Were these two fellas supposed to take you shopping, Martha? Mm-hmm. Dress shopping. And believe it or not, it was their idea. Sounds like bribery to me. Hey, whose side are you on? <laughs> <laughs> Say, I thread these all day long. Do you know how to thread a projector? Sure, I uh, run the one at school. Well, you take that over then. Can you folks see all right? Fine by me. See all right. You know, this is a silent film, so I read from this outline. I'll pull the screen down. Boy, what some guys won't do to make a living. Oh, I don't mind. I'm still a kid about movies. You about ready, son? Ready when you are. Okay, I'll get the light. All right, on with the show. That's it down there, covering 160 acres with over 4 million square feet of floor space. Big? Well, it takes 21 miles of railroad track and five miles of roadway just to handle its transportation requirement. It's Alice Chalmers West Alice Works, where engineering in action is at work on your future today. The manufacturing operation is complete from foundry to final assembly from molten metal to finished products for both farm and industry. 
Its boundaries have melted and poured up to 80,000 tons of metal in a single year. And in the Ford shops, parts for crushers, and steam and hydraulic turbines are heated, rough formed and shaped in a giant 2,500 ton hydraulic press. Really a big operation, isn't it? Oh, it sure is. You almost have to see it to believe it. Smaller parts are volume produced on 8,000 pound steam drop hammers. Oh, incidentally, this happens to be a part for a tractor. Uh, probably the hub for a D-series tractor. In the shops, banks of automatic equipment. Volume produced parts of uniformly high quality at lowest possible cost. The modern way, the Alice Chalmers way. Vertical boring mills as large as 40 feet. Machine giant casting. And hydraulic turbine runners for installation in hydroelectric generator plants are welded on this largest welding positioning table in the Western Hemisphere. Upwards of 25,000 power tools are used in producing such company specialties as this giant turbine generator unit for steam power plant use. In fact, many items of basic equipment used by the electric utilities, transformers, circuit breakers, substations, they're the well-known diamond trademark. You see, Martha, this company isn't such a stranger to you after all. Their equipment helps supply the power that lights your home. And runs a television set, too. You wouldn't think of that. Well, I must admit, I had no idea about all these things. Oh, this is interesting. At TVA's Hiawassee Dam in Tennessee, an Alice Chalmers built and installed reversible pump turbine does double duty, changing water power to electricity by day and electricity back to stored water power at night. Oh, I know what that is. Argonne National Laboratory. That's right, son. America's first nuclear power plant where electricity is now being produced from nuclear fuel. Alice Chalmers engineers work closely with the staff at Argonne, developing necessary equipment. Our science teacher told us about that. The reactor is underwater. Uh-huh. It says, in this atomic furnace, water boils right next to fissioning uranium, absorbing its intense heat, and steam flows directly to a turbine generator unit. The latter, along with other essential equipment, was specially designed and built by Alice Chalmers. And then there are the process industries, flour milling companies, for example. Alice Chalmers has been supplying them with needed equipment for over 110 years. Its first product was Burr Millstones for milling grain. And I've been told about nine out of 10 loaves of bread are made with flour processed with Alice Chalmers equipment. Now, material in any form, from gold to grain, from asbestos to iron ore, is grist for their broad line of processing machinery. This is their ACL system, used in a new process for making cement. And in this hospital... Don't tell me they make hospitals, too. No, not that I know of, Martha, but they do make this engine-powered generator on standby duty here to keep vital hospital equipment operating in case of electrical power failure. Boy, that would be a rough spot to have your power cut out on you. That's right. Operating by candlelight wouldn't be much fun. Yeah, especially for the patient. Ah, let's see here. Industry applications include engine power to operate this oil field drilling rig. Engine power that goes to sea aboard workboats like this as well as pleasure boats. And engine power that turns to muscle power when it's applied to the quick and efficient lifting, shifting, and handling of materials by Alice Chalmers forklift trucks. They help to speed up all manufacturing operations. In tall timber country, this crawler tractor has what it takes to lug the big sticks out of the woods. While for any and all earth-moving operations, there is a product of the Construction Machinery Division, specifically designed to do the job. 
You've probably heard about the new Air Force Academy near Colorado Springs, where this fleet of heavy-duty construction machines had to literally chew its way through the foothills of the Colorado Rockies and on an almost round-the-clock crash schedule. Alice Chalmers makes that equipment too? Yes, sir, they surely do. And here's another fleet of their big tractors and motor scrapers at work on the Northern Illinois toll road. Loading, hauling, spreading, leveling. Doing whatever the job of building a modern superhighway calls for. And doing it faster and better than ever before. All of which, I guess, begins to add up to what they mean by engineering in action. Think what improved construction equipment means to all of us just in connection with carrying out the federal highway program. The 41,000 mile network of key thoroughfares connecting the nation's largest cities. And equipment, not only for building the new roads, but maintaining the old ones, including the farm to market roads. It's about time you did something for us farmers. <laughs> okay, but why stop there? Let's give him a hand with his irrigation problem, too. Notice what brand of engine power is pumping the water to those thirsty fields. I guess you won't have any trouble recognizing what this is. The D14 pulling a Model 66 harvester. In the farm equipment field, Persian orange has been part of the color scheme of farm progress from horse to horsepower down through the years. The memory of one such company achieved advance, a true milestone in farm mechanization, is preserved in the Wisconsin State Farm Museum at Cassville. It's the first farm tractor ever to use low-pressure tires. A 1932 Alice Chalmers Model U. It was this combination of big airplane-type tires on the rear wheels and standard high-pressure truck tires on the front wheels that stepped up the speed of most field operations 25 to 50 percent over previous steel wheel types. Well, no sooner was the age of the rubber-tired tractor upon us than Alice Chalmers pioneered another important new development, the all-crop harvester. It could be both pulled and power takeoff operated by a two-plow tractor and as one salesman put it, harvested everything from beans to birdseed. It was the forerunner of the much improved combines we have today, which incidentally still lead their feet. You wouldn't be just a little bit prejudiced, would you? <laughs> well, these were fundamental advancements in farm mechanization. Here we go again, Ralph. A D-14 demonstrating that traction booster feature you were asking about before. You see, all he has to do is move the traction booster lever to the position he wants it in, and the system takes over automatically. Weight is hydraulically transferred to the drive wheels instantly as needed, with the result that the tractor pull capability far exceeds its otherwise normal weight expectancy. And that's a major advance, too. In the tractor shops of the West Alice Works is a final assembly line, where the precision machine parts for today's tractors, like the D14 and D17, come together smoothly and efficiently to form the finished product. And this is mass production at its best, giving the customer quality through quantity at a price he can afford to pay. And that's right in the best family tradition, because from the days of that first rubber-tired tractor, Alice Chalmers Engineering in Action has had as its goal machines designed to pay a profit on the family farm. Paint them right on the conveyor, don't they? They sure don't waste any time. No, they move them through pretty fast. After the painting, as you can see, they get wheels, lights, final touches. Mustn't forget that. Here I go again. So busy watching, I forgot about the reading. And before any new model reaches production, it must survive thousands of hours of rugged tests. To prove and prove again, it measures up in both quality and performance. 
And that brings up the other maxim that guides Alice Chalmers' engineering in action. If we can't build it better, we won't build it. So finally, what was once an idea, and then a blueprint, and then a laboratory experiment, is now a reality and ready to go to work, ready to help some future owner to better living, better farming, more profit through engineering in action. Say, that short subject was all right. Now what time's the main feature go on? <laughs> the main feature? You'd better be careful, Ralph, or you'll have to listen to some more of my reading. <laughs> uh, you want me to rewind this? Oh, no, son, I'll just put this down here on the floor. Well, Martha, what'd you think of that? You got a little bit better idea about the company? Well, I just don't see how they can do it. I mean, make so many different things. And I suppose they make a lot more than we saw in the picture, too. Yes, they do, a lot more. It's a big company. According to this booklet, 19 plants and 119 offices around the world. Well, what'll it be, folks? You want to take it with you, or shall we deliver it? Do we what? Or what? I hope you'll excuse my new salesman. He's just a little bit eager, I guess. <laughs> I would like to make a suggestion, if I may. I know that Martha has at least one more important thing to do than to sit here and keep on talking tractors. So why don't we take this up again the next time we get together, which might be a demonstration out at your place, if that's okay with you. You mean actually bring the D-17 out? Sure, Fred and I'll bring it out, and you can all give it a whirl. You too, Martha. That's the best way to find out if it's what you want. Well, sounds fine to me. Me too. How about it, Mom? Sure. When will you come? Would Thursday morning be all right? Yeah, Thursday's okay. And maybe you'd like to be looking over a couple of pieces of literature in the meantime. There you are, son. You take charge of this. Oh, thanks. And Martha, don't you be letting these fellows off too easily on that shopping tour, you hear? Don't worry. I won't. We'll see you on Thursday. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello? Hi. Fred talking. Hi, Fred. I'm glad you called. How's everything going out there? Bill's out in the field driving the 17 now. He seems really tickled with it, but he's trying not to show it. Well, that's good. Which plow are you using? The four bottom. That's the one he asked me to demonstrate. He needs the extra clearance. All right. Say, listen, Fred. We've got a date at the Williams place next Thursday morning. You can make it, can't you? Sure, I can make it. And I think we ought to use the five bottom plow. Oh, it's tailor-made for that bean ground or else. Okay, the five it is. And I'll put on the new demonstrator C2. You know, I can see him from here. Oh, Bill? Yes, he looks like he's having fun. That D-17 may do me out of a job. How's that? The job that he is doing out in this field is a better convincer than any sales talk of mine. Maybe you and I ought to both stay home Thursday morning. <laughs> <laughs> and let the D-17 have all the fun? Uh-uh. I'll see you out there, Fred. Bye. Personally, I like demonstrations. They're sort of honest. Oh, you have to talk some about what you have to sell, but there's a time for talking and a time for doing. No two demonstrations ever go the same, but Fred here is easy to work with, and we kind of try to let matters take their course. Mostly, folks want to get right up there behind the wheel and try it for themselves. But the two Ralphs had been doing some homework on that sales literature, so the first order of business was to clear up a few questions. How to adjust the roll shift front axle for one. It's pretty easy, really. No jacks or sledges necessary. This feature makes the job of spacing the front wheels to fit your rows both easier and safer as Ralph, who's used to doing it the old way, can fully appreciate. The secret is in a well-engineered application of steering leverage, letting it do the work. It's a one-man operation normally, 
But if a prospect wants to lend a hand, well, no harm in letting him get acquainted with his new tractor. That's what demonstrations are for. And that takes care of that. Even a good driver like Ralph should be given an opportunity to familiarize himself with the controls of a new machine. And that's what Fred is about here. The power director lever, which can be shifted on the go, is his high and low range control. Coupled with a four-speed transmission, it makes possible eight gear speeds forward and two in reverse, plus live constant speed power takeoff. The instrument panel is right, the instrument panel is right where it should be on the D-17 too. Easy to see, easy to read. Fred may think he's just given this basic training to the two Ralphs, but Martha isn't missing a thing. Oh, it may be a man's world, but as I always say, buying a new tractor is a family affair. Of course, young Ralph isn't missing much either. Just wait till he gets a turn at the wheel. Bringing the rear wheels into line with the front ones gives Fred a chance to demonstrate an original Alice Chalmers tractor feature. Power shift rear wheel. Engine power shifts the rear wheels in or out on heavy spiral rails. And that's some more engineering in action. Another formerly time consuming chore, job changeover, has been made quick, easy, and safe by the snap coupler hitch. Okay, boy, just take it easy and bring it in on target. That's all you have to do. Steady as you go. Good. Nothing wrong with his aim, is there, Dad? Well, so much for the preliminaries. Now let's go to work. Let's see if the D-17 looks as much at home plowing up a field as it does standing in the Williams driveway. Okay, partner, it's all yours. Sit right down and make yourself comfortable. The condition of the field is what determines traction requirements. After the right range selector setting has been made, the traction booster system transfers the needed amount of weight to the drive wheels automatically. When a man spends up to a thousand hours a year at the wheel of a tractor, and many of today's farmers do, he's primed and waiting for anything that will enable him to do more work in less time. And that's traction booster. Is this D-17 a lot of tractor? Well, ask the man who owns... Yep, that's right. He said it was all right with him if it was all right with her. Of course, she hasn't said that it is yet, but after all, fair's fair, she got her new dress. Eventually, and reluctantly, Ralph gave up the wheel, and the younger generation took over. It sure didn't take him long to catch on. A short driving lesson, and he was on his own. He's coming into a turn now, so let's see if he remembers what I told him to do. Atta boy! By shifting his power director into low range, he takes his turn at about 30% less speed and better than 42% more pull power. And he does it on the go. On the straightaway again, so back into high range he goes. And who says the gals don't make good drivers? I'll take my chances riding with this one anytime. Funny the difference in reactions to a first ride. Martha, I'm pretty sure, was feeling a bit pleased with herself, and why not? 
She'd done mighty well, and with the men of the family watching. Whatever this tractor's got, it gets them. Always leaves them smiling. Among other things, Ralph especially liked the roll shift front axle. And the power of that all new D-17 engine, which is so smoothly controlled and applied by the power director that makes possible on-the-go shifting. The roomy platform and comfortable riding seat that handily positions for either sitting or standing operation. Martha especially commented on those. And of course, the time-saving convenience of power shift rear wheels. And the snap coupler hitch. Put them all together and you have, well, what else? Engineering in action. Oh, by the way, while Martha was driving before, she said the D-17 was all right with her if it was all right with Ralph. Well, I must say, it couldn't have happened to a nicer family. And it is a family affair.